we're going to talk about the um, derivatives of the six basic trig functions. Uh, but first, let me let me talk a little bit about what are called complementary angles. Complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. And if you have a right triangle, aren't the two acute angles of a right triangle always complementary, aren't they? And the significance of that is if you have, for example, the sine of angle A would give you A over C, that's the cosine of the complement of A, angle B. What is the cosine of B? It's also A over C. Sine of A equals the cosine of B. It's true with all the trig functions. Tangent of A, guess what that equals? It equals A over B, which is the cotangent of the complement of A, isn't it? And that's why it's called the cotangent or the cosine. It's because of that um, relationship. The, the secant of A is equal to the cosecant of B. Okay? So that's why, so that's why we call them co-functions. Anyway, um, so what I want you to notice is uh, the derivative of sine x is the cosine of x. I think we looked at that in class. We looked at the graph of the slopes of the tangent lines to the sine function. I think we got the cosine function. We also did the same thing with the cosine function. And we, remember, we did not get the sine function. We got a reflection of the sine function across the x-axis. But look at the pattern here. The derivative of the co of the cofunction of the sine function, or the cosine function, is equal to negative the cofunction here. See? Negative the cofunction of cosine of x was negative sine x. So if you can re remember the first one, you can you can re relate it, re relate the second one using cofunctions. Same is true with, with these two. Look, the derivative of the tangent turns out to be secant squared, and we're going to show this in class well, why this is true. But look, the derivative of the cofunction of tangent is negative the cofunction of this. Negative the cofunction of secant squared is negative cosecant squared. They all work the same way. If you can remember that the derivative of the secant is secant tangent, then the derivative of the cofunction of secant or co cosecant is going to be negative the cofunction co of this. So that, that's a nice way to, to, to keep it straight. I knew you'd like that. So really, instead of trying to, to remember all six, if you think about the three basic ones, and then the rest you can think of it in terms of cofunctions, co it might help you a little bit. Anyway, so let's look, let's look at some examples. Uh, let's look at the derivative of y equals the sine of x over x. By the way, I do want you to learn those uh, six differ differentiation rules for, for the trig functions. You, you do need to know those for quizzes and tests. And you will definitely use those next quarter in Math 152. All right, so what do you think, folks? Uh, quotient rule here? You could probably even use the product rule if you move the x up to the top and made it x to the negative 1. You could probably use the product rule. But let's go ahead and use the quotient rule here. It says it'll be the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. So you can write your final answer as x cosine of x minus sine x over x squared. That's not too bad. Take the derivative of y equals the square root of x times the cosine function. Isn't that a product rule, perhaps? If you first write it with fractional powers, rational exponents, you'd use the product rule. It's the first times the derivative of the second. Don't forget the derivative of cosine is negative sine plus the derivative of the first, which, which becomes one-half x to the negative one-half times the second. And if you get rid of the negative exponent, you, you move the x to the negative one-half down to the bottom, and your common denominator is two times x to the one-half. Notice when you multiply this one on top and bottom by two times x to the one-half, you're actually going to get a two x on top. That's where that came from. So you could write your final answer as cosine of x minus 2x sine x all over 2 square root of x. Look at this one. The derivative of y equals secant theta plus cotangent theta. Well, I would just probably take the derivative of each one. The derivative of secant is secant tangent, and the derivative of cotangent is going to be, uh, you're going to get negative cosecant squared theta. Another thing, don't forget don't drop the thetas. I'll mark off for that too. Make sure you put the theta on when you find the answer. Let's do a couple more. How about this one? The uh, derivative of y equals 1 minus secant t over tangent of t. This looks like a quotient rule, doesn't it? There might be more than one way to do these, but this is certainly one way to do it. Uh, 
use the uh, quotient rule, it's the bottom times the derivative of the top. Derivative of the top becomes zero. Um, minus, and then the, the sec derivative of secant is secant tangent. That's where we get this. Minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, and the derivative of tangent is secant squared. All over the square of the bottom. Remember, tangent of t quantity squared is the same thing as tan squared t. Now, there's not really much you can do to this except multiply it out. I don't see any trig identity you can use here. There might be some sometimes, however, when you might be able to to, to use a trig identity on these. On this first, like for example, example five, you might be able to simplify this before you use the product rule. You may not have to use the product rule if you write cosecant as one over sine theta and distribute, don't you get 1 plus cotangent theta? And so there, that might be a good idea. Uh, when you differentiate that, you get 0 minus cosecant squared theta, which is exactly what you would have gotten had you used the um, product rule. Try it. Anyway, let's do one more. On this one, you want to differentiate x sine x cosine x. That's actually three functions there. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to pretend that we're going to group it like it's two functions. We're going to look at it as one function is x sine x, the other function is cosine of x. So when you when you use the product rule with those two functions, the derivative becomes the first function times the derivative of the second. So this is derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first function. Well, folks, if the first function is a product, don't you have to use the product rule? inside here to find the derivative of the first function. The derivative of x sine x is x cosine of x plus sine x times 1. And then keep the second function fixed. So that's kind of sneaky. When you multiply everything out, you get this. x or negative x sine squared x plus x cosine squared of x plus sine x cosine of x. And there's not really much you can do. You can, I, I, you can leave it like that. that. That's fine. If you want to impress your friends, maybe you could factor out a x from the first two, and do you rec recognize this is a, um, you can use a trig identity, this is a double angle formula for cosine, so you can impress your friends, or sometimes the back of the book does stuff like that too, but on a quiz or test, you, you could leave it at this stage here. Anyway, I guess that's it for today, we'll see you in class.